What's up guys, we've got a very thick MOOC here for today's MOOC review. We're taking a look at the Hobby Japan Mechanics Archive here for Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam Edition. This one, if you guys are a fan of the Mobile Suits from Zeta Gundam, obviously the Zeta Gundam itself, and then all the other ones, because there's a lot of different Mobile Suits featured in here, then you guys will enjoy this episode. Or if you just enjoy really awesome Gunpla modeling, I think you'll enjoy it as well as we're going to take a look through this. But yeah, there is a ton to get through with this book. It's has a lot of stuff in here, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So let's take a look around here on the outside. Inside the dust jacket, we've got just the Zeta Gundam there looking pretty boss. And with that kind of just monochrome purple, also very cool. On the back side, we've got the O and some other mobile suits there. The list price here for this one, uh, MSRP 2,900 yen, so not too bad. It's still around like 25 27 dollars i mean something like that is not too bad considering that yeah this is very thick it is over 200 pages about 225 uh 226 pages there in total so there's a lot of stuff in here let's go ahead and get into it and so because of that i'm not going to go through everything is super in detail uh not that like i normally do but you know even less detail than normal i think for this one probably just because there's so much so here we got our contents uh, which shows you all the different mobile suits that are going to be featured. So starting off in UC0087, got the Mark II Gundam and the Arc 782 there in the background, which also looks very nicely weathered. Looks pretty cool. And it looks like first off here, we're going to have an introduction to some of the mobile suits from the series, from the Rick DS to the Hyzak to the Jim 2 the Yakushiki, uh, the Gundam Mark II etc etc some information about some of those mobile suits and our first one here is the Gundam Mark II modeled by Naoki so we'll see who some of the familiar builders are here in this one obviously Naoki pretty familiar name really nice build here of the Gundam Mark II this is the 100 scale master grade version 2.0 here not a kit that I've built uh, I'm wondering if you guys have built that what your thoughts are on the kit I'll have to build one someday. I feel like it's just like such a popular master grade that um, it's kind of weird that I've never built one, I feel like, so I'll have to do that. This one has uh, some of Naoki's signature, like very, very subtle weathering on it. Not really so much on the outer armor. The outer armor is pretty clean, but you can see on the frame, he did some weathering. I don't, I don't even know if you guys can see. I mean, it's really, really subtle, but some like very subtle uh, weathering here around on the inner frame, which is quite interesting to see there. I mean, very realistic, right? You would think that'd be some of the areas that would get dirty first, just from, you know, general wear and tear of it being a, a big machine, right? Here we got the kit in a couple of different cool action poses and then some work in progress included. So it's not just all a photo gallery, but we are going to have some work in progress in here, which is awesome to see. We have the original kit versus the modified kit here, so you can kind of see side by side the difference. And obviously not a ton of like heavy modification on this, but just some uh, nice modifications here and there just to improve the overall look of it and definitely looks very cool. All right, now we've got the Titans version Gundam Mark II. This one modeled by Sekita. Uh, this one also has a very interesting kind of finish on it that I'm not sure if it's going to be too easy for you guys to see, but the dark blue of the armor, I'm not sure if it just like is the shine on the dark blue, but it, it looks like, yeah, it looks like that is very slightly kind of highlighted would be my guess, either highlighted or shaded, but it's got like a kind of pre-shading look going on where it's very, it's very dark blue, but kind of in certain areas you can see where it's a little bit lighter. So I would assume that maybe he just did that by uh, just highlighting. So painting like the really, really dark blue, it's like almost black. It's like very dark navy blue. And then a little bit lighter tone spraying in like some of the areas around there and like the center of some of these panel areas. And then it's uh, got a nice, very, very smooth, I'll mention a very smooth gloss coat over the top of it, which is a really interesting. It's like a buffed gloss. I don't know. It's not like super shiny, but it's kind of like a, high gloss satin I don't know very difficult very interesting finish on that but um, yeah so the the finish of like the top coat mixed with the the color shading going on with that makes for a really really interesting uh, finish here on this one so that's kind of cool here we got some work in progress again for this one showing a little bit of the modification for that so okay here's a little bit about the painting process it looks like so yeah unfortunately everything's in Japanese so I'll have to go in later and do some translating on this but it looks like it's base coated in black and then uh, like, is that like a white or silver? 
painted over the top of that, and then the colors and the top coat done on top of that. So yeah, very interesting process for that one. All right. Here we got a Rick Diaz modeled by K Tanado. This one is also the 100 scale master grade. So I don't believe that 100 scale is going to be constant for all of the kits featured in here, but at least for these first few, I think for most of the kits that, that do have a 100 scale, like master grade version of them, then there, we're probably going to see them in master grade form here, but really, really nice Rick Diaz. The Rick Diaz is a design that um, it's never really done too much for me. I mean, there's certain aspects of the design and I mean, definitely some very nice builds of it that I can see from time to time that I do really like. Uh, but then there are some kind of more 80s typical kind of goofy features about it as well, I'll say. Uh, and then we got the red version Rick Diaz here, this one modeled by Nobuiki Sakurai. Here we've got a cool scene with the launch deck and the Mark II. There at the start. Here we got a better look at it. This one's definitely got a little bit more heavy weathering on it going on. You guys should definitely be able to see some of that. It's heavier weathering, but still done in like a really, really nice kind of uh, restrained way. So I mean, like there's a lot of noticeable weathering on there, but it's really, really tight, if that makes sense. And hopefully that does make sense to those of you guys who, who do do weathering, but it's really nice what we got going on on here. Uh, very kind of accurate, it seems like, as far as like the placement of the weathering and everything, uh, where paint's just kind of chipped off, where there's some little bit heavier damage, where you can see some kind of marks from uh, kind of bullets or whatever that might be hitting it on the front skirts, for example, areas like that. Hmm. Very nice. Moving on then to the Master Grade Hyzak here by Ga First Age interesting name guessing that's not his real name uh, but this one yeah the Hyzak is another one just like with the Rick Diaz a design that is interesting and also just a little bit goofy for me but I've certainly seen some beautiful builds of the Hyzak this one being no exception I mean of course it looks really nice here with the uh, parachute pack uh, it does look very cool. So I'm guessing that's that parachute pack that was released to go with the Marasai when the Marasai was released, but I'm not sure. That could be from the original Master Grade 1.0 um, Hyakushiki kit, possibly. I'm not sure, but a little bit of work in progress here. And really nice, clean build there of the Hyzak. Very cool. All right, the Galbaldi. So this is a 100 scale scratch build, even though we do have an HGUC kit uh, of the Galbaldi beta. This is a 100 scale scratch build, so that's pretty impressive. This one's modeled by Keita Yagyu. Really, really nice, uh, like subtle details on here. So we have certain areas of the armor, and hopefully you guys can see that, where you have like these big wide open spaces, especially like here on the legs, most notably, but then this really nice fine detail, like right along the edges and along these edges here. It's really cool. Uh, it's again kind of utilizing that kind of less is more philosophy when it comes to um, Gumpla modeling or just sci-fi modeling kind of in general where you know you don't need to pack details into everywhere possible or panel lines on this so I mean it's kind of hard to imagine you know like leaving this whole side of the lower leg just wide open without adding some panel lines or anything like that I mean he added detail by uh, using decals but without adding any scribing or anything like that added in. I guess over here, like the back of the side of the leg, there's some details right there, which is just kind of part of the design. But um, yeah, I mean, it is pretty impressive. Very cool. Even the parts there for the bottom of the feet and everything. So some of this is like uh, planned out. So I wonder if this, some of these parts are 3D printed, actually, if that's the case for this, possibly. But that definitely looks very cool. Here we got a 100 scale Master Grade Gym 2. Here, this one modeled by Orange Ebis. This is kind of different from what I was just talking about in that this one does have a lot of panel lines added in. So he didn't leave, uh, you know, it's not packed, super packed with detail. There are like uh, some areas where you know, there's definitely uh, some wide open space there, but compared to the build that we just saw, I mean, it's very different in that like, so here for the side of the arm, for example, it's got a couple of panel lines here on the, even the front of the shoulder, a couple of very kind of diagonal panel lines, which is quite abnormal for adding panel lines here onto like the front of like a Gundam or gym design uh, kind of mobile suit here. Normally the panel line would either go like straight across and then like have a diagonal cut and then like straight across like that. But this one's actually like a completely diagonal, which is, Certainly very unique 
for some custom panel lining on that. So that's pretty cool. And here we got it with the high Zach and a couple of different poses there. A little bit of work in progress over here on that. Yeah, pretty impressive. So this one's a custom build, obviously, and it looks like based off of the Master Grade Gym 1 version 2.0. Uh, and then just customize to make it into a gym too. So pretty incredible, very nice. All right, so here we got the Master Grade version 2.0 Hyakushiki modeled by Kojima Dai Taicho. Definitely some unfamiliar names for me. So some of these are not names that I think that I've seen or that I can remember. And this one, even though it's got that really nice gold finish on there, and this one's definitely like a really nice custom painted gold with some very interesting kind of shading going on, shading and or weathering kind of a mix of both there for the effect on the gold looks really, really nice. It does have some really subtle weathering on here with like some chips, uh, like chipping effects and kind of weathering effects, especially around like in the areas where there's like the exhaust vents up here on the shoulders, like in the backpacks, you can see where, you know, obviously, even though it's got that gold finish, it would be a little bit weathered just from, you know, a lot of use in battle. So it's really cool to see. Uh, you know, it's difficult to imagine how to do weathering on like a, a gold surface, right? So that's pretty impressive. This is definitely a really great uh, material to use for reference if you wanted to do something like this, have like a gold mobile suit and you want to do weathering on it. It's a little, it's a little, adds a little kind of extra layer of difficulty, I think, to the process. So this would be a really good reference material for if that was something that you wanted to do. Really nice. Uh, yeah, okay. Next up, the Master Grade Marasai here by Matsuo. And this one is another really great build. I mean, all these builds in here are really, really, really well done. It's just the painting and the finishes on them. This one has, another, once again, a really nice kind of pre-shading effect going on there, but it almost looks kind of a little bit similar to Max Watanabe's style where the shading looks a bit more kind of blotchy just because of the way that it's hand painted. Although this doesn't necessarily look hand painted, but I wonder if maybe the base layer was hand painted to get that kind of blotchy, uh, more natural look. And then just the main color was then just airbrushed over the top of that, I wonder. Let's see, kind of skip ahead a little bit if there's anything about that. It doesn't look like it. I'm sure there's probably something in the text a little bit about how the kit was painted, but would definitely be interested to see because it has a really, really nice, very subtle effect to that paint, which uh, again, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how easy it is for you guys to see on video, uh, but that's that's the beauty of having these, you know, like to be able to have this in hand, have a physical copy of this MOOC, because then you can see the photos, you know, like right up close in person very clearly and everything, so. Yeah, all right, moving on to the Nemo here. This is, this is the Master Grade Nemo modeled by Kazuhisa Tamura. Another really cool design. I do like the color change on this, taking that green into like a more kind of teal bluish kind of color there. It's not quite so obnoxiously green. So that does look really nice here. Some really cool modeling on this. Here it is with the Rick DS and with the Gym 2 over here. Really nice, clean finish on this one and a good balance, I think, of the panel lining. I wasn't really too much of a fan of the panel lining going on on that Gym 2. Uh, this one ha does have some of that and some panel line details, some details added around here and there, it looks like, overall on the design, but it's still, you know, kept, you know, it's controlled, and so it looks really nice. A little bit of uh, proportion changes, it looks like, over here for some of the modifications on it, but. Overall, very nice build there. You can see the original kit with the modifications on it. All right, the Jim Cannon here. This is the Master Grade Jim Cannon modeled by Hiroshi Sarai. This is the Jabro Defense Force type version of that. So it's a little bit different custom color scheme on it, uh, which I do really like. The, the It's you know very similar to like the standard Jim Cannon color scheme, just with a little bit different color changes to it. Uh, I do like the red head on that and torso and everything. That is pretty cool. I have to say, I do kind of like that. I'm actually in the middle of painting one of these right now. So I might actually change my plans. I was actually planning on a different color scheme, but I do kind of like this one. I, I have to say, I might actually change my plans at the last minute. I actually, literally right after recording this video, I was gonna go start painting this kit. And now I'm having a second thought on that. So, hmm, okay. Interesting. 
All right, so anyway, once again, really nice weathering on this. This one has some more of like the dirt and dust weathering of it being like a ground mobile suit compared to I think most of what we've seen has all been kind of uh, space style weathering. This one's definitely got the ground weathering going on here. You can see the unpainted kit so you can kind of see the differences in the colors. For example, uh, this one has the entire skirt sections all red or than originally being black and white. This one doesn't have any black on it at all where the knees and the feet were black on the original kit, now they're not, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I like that color scheme. Okay, moving on then to the Gundam Mark II and Flying Armor. This one is high grade now, so this is gonna be our first 144 scale kit. So, oh, okay, sorry, it's a combination. So it's the, the main kit is the real grade, the Flying Armor is the high grade. Modeled by Shinichiro Sawatake. Gotta love that real grade Gundam Mark II, even though it is one of the earlier real grade kits, I think it still holds up very well. It's a really good looking kit. And there it is, kind of surfing along on the flying armor, very cool. I've always liked the flying armor too. I'm not always a fan of like uh, base jabber designs, uh, always, but the flying armor I've always thought was a pretty cool, uh, like, base jabber. It doesn't have a base jabber name, but I mean, it still suits the same uh, purpose as the, like, the different base jabbers and things that we have. So it's pretty cool looking kind of flight unit there. Yeah, it looks really nice and some nice weathering going on on that as well. All right, then we've got the high grade Gundam The Origin Act Zaku. So this one is modeled by Ryuji Hirose from the Origin Club M. So that's kind of cool. So some of these, are like where it has the modeler's names, it's going to be hard for you guys to see. But after the modeler's names in parentheses, uh, on some of them, not all of them, some of them will have like an extra word or something in parentheses. That's from like the club or group. Some of them are just like involved in a, a club and they just will sometimes include that in there. Not always, but. This one is, and there was another one uh, that we saw a couple times before. Where was that? Yeah, First Age. There was a couple of them that were from the First Age group, but anyway, really nice build here of the Atsaku. I love the HD The Origin kits, and this one is certainly a really cool looking one. So we got the proportion changes over here, a little bit of an extension in the torso, the skirt armor, the legs. Uh, just to kind of extend out those proportions a little bit. So nice to see some work in progress. You know, I always like to see a good mix of finished photos and work in progress. I, with this, uh, it's probably like 80 to 90% finished photos and then a little bit of work in progress, which is pretty good. I wouldn't mind a little bit more work in progress, but I, I like the look of this so far. Here we got the Asmar 144 scale HG kit here, modeled by Yoshitaka Chotoku. Very interesting color scheme for this. I definitely, speaking of like, changing the color scheme from something obnoxious to something much more palatable. This is a great example of that because, man, the original Asimar colors are pretty 80s obnoxious. This one is a lot more subdued. I think a much more kind of utilitarian color scheme looks really nice. It's still got that kind of dark green, but then he's swapped the yellow for just this kind of standard kind of bluish sea gray kind of color there, which looks really nice, I think, for this. Makes it look much more like a like a realistic flying machine, right? Okay, here we got the Gaplant. Still hoping that someday we may get a master grade Gaplant. I would love that. The HG kit though, while it is an older HG kit, I think it holds up very well. It's a really, really great and fun kit in my opinion. I highly recommend it. Uh, but here we have this one's modeled by Hiroyuki Noda. And this one, once again, is an example of where I'm not a big fan of the custom panel lines on it, I'll tell you guys. So it's got kind of, it's, it, this is one of those ones where, it, for me, in my opinion, it looks a bit like, you know, adding panel lines for the sake of adding panel lines, where they don't necessarily really add to the design, I don't think, all that much. But aside from that, of course, beautiful painting on, uh, on this, again, the finish uh, of the armor uh, with the kind of more metallic, kind of metallic gunmetal bits for like the hands and the frames, the mechanical aspects of it being in that kind of glossier gunmetal metallic color look really nice. All right, so here we got this with the uh, long range booster there as well, which also is another reason why the HGC Gaplant is such a great kit because it comes with this big massive booster, which is super cool. So you got that. All right, then we got the Dodai Kai here, 144 scale HG version of that, modeled by Manabu Kimura. This is basically just the uh, Dodai Kai, not really the full model, but this one also has a Jim 2 on there. 
just for good measure. I wonder if this is the same one that we saw with the Mark II earlier. Let me just go back a little bit. So we saw one right here, and this looks like it's the same model. Yeah, that would be my guess. So it's the same model here. So that looks really nice. All these kind of, uh, what would you call them? I don't know, aircraft. Uh, I do like the designs of those. They're all pretty cool. And there's a little bit of a photo of just the Jim 2 down there as well. Speaking of aircraft, here we've got the Aud Humla, I'm guessing is the correct pronunciation for that. This one is the 1 to 1500 scale. So this does have some mobile suits inside there, which are going to be like really, really tiny. So this one's modeled by Einosuke Shodai Hino. Interesting name, but really interesting design here for this. I really like this. I don't know if I've ever seen this design before. I don't know. Maybe was this in the anime? Maybe it had a brief appearance or something. And I just don't remember. Or yeah, I guess so. Because they're making it look like this is like, because here's the RG Mark II that we saw earlier in the Dodaikai and then the uh, aircraft there in the background. So I don't know. I guess it must have been in the anime. I just don't remember. But really cool design. Yeah, I actually quite like that. All right, now we're getting into some more mobile suits here from 0087 and 88. We got the O here, the Cubile. Looks like we're going to be getting into maybe some more of, uh, well, the Zeta Gundam. I guess that was all kind of like early Zeta era. This is later Zeta era stuff. So where we've got the instruction of the Zeta Gundam and the Mark II. So this is the Zeta Gundam Master Grade version 2.0, modeled once again by Naoki. So Naoki is getting the kind of leading role in each of these sections here so this one's really nice this one obviously uh, this issue was made or this was released and it was before the release of the master grade verka zeta gundam so yeah this is from 2022 uh, february february 14th actually so valentine's day february uh, valentine's day 2022 so not too long before the release of the verka this is just the 2.0 but it does look really really nice here believe this is what's on the cover yep that's the same one that's on the cover there in wave rider mode also looks quite nice and yes of course the hyper mega launcher which was unfortunately not included with the verka still gonna complain about that i'm never gonna give that one up i think and we still don't know if that's gonna be coming out at any point as like a p bandai exclusive version of that probably just gonna be a repackage of the 2.0 version with some like a little bit different colors and a little bit different decal scheme for it or something i don't know but we'll see all right so here we got a, another master grade zeta gundam this one looks like it's the zeta 1.0 master grade this one's modeled by naoki again but a different naoki this one's by naoki kimura so let's see Really cool build here. I actually quite liked the Zeta 1.0. Uh, just the design of it, the shapes, the proportions of it, I think are, are quite nice. I mean, it's, it's very different looking from the Verka, of course, and from the 2.0. But the 1.0 does have a nice kind of charm to it, to the look of it, I feel like. This one, of course, is done really well. He's added a lot of detail, almost a little bit kind of too much detail is kind of added around here and there for my taste. Uh, but still, I do really like the design of the 1.0. And you know, it's it's a old kit. What it was in 1995, I think when it came out. So you can see like, the, it's one of the first master grades. So it's, it's pretty old. Uh, and so he definitely had to put a, a lot of work into this kit to get it to look as good as it does. And it's cool to see there's quite a lot of work in progress photos here to see, to kind of really see just how much work went into that. All right, here we've got the O, the master grade kit here. The long-awaited reprint on the O. I don't know when it's ever going to be reprinted. Hopefully at some point. But this one's modeled once again by Kei Tanado. Uh, we saw earlier in the issue here. So uh, really cool kit. Definitely. That said, if you don't want to wait you know, for a long, long time and don't want to overpay for the Master Grade, I would recommend the High Grade. The High Grade is pretty nice. Um, I feel like the Master Grade you know, has more color separation. A little bit more detail on it but the high grade is not not a bad option if you really are a big fan of the o this is a beautiful build of it really nice weathering on this because it's such a massive kit and you have these big wide open spaces on it i think he did a really good job uh, adding a lot of personality adding a lot of character to these big wide open spaces on here just with some really nice subtle uh, weathering going on on that so it looks good. I mean, it's very easy for a model like this where you have like these big wide open spaces for those spaces to just be kind of boring. 
But even in like these big wide open areas of armor, I mean, they still kind of catch your eye just because of the weathering and decals, just the painting on it, the finish is so good. So that's pretty nice. All right, modeled by Meister Sekita, we have the Master Grade Cubile here. Another one that I have built the Cubile Damned, but I've not built the original Cubile or the Cubile Mark II, even though I have a red Cubile Mark II that I've had in my backlog for a long, 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 long time. I need to build that eventually. Anyway, uh, this one does look very nice. Of course, the Cubile, you know, is looking its shiniest when it's got that nice gloss finish on it. So really super clean, high gloss finish on this one. But once again, it's, it's not like a glassy gloss. I mean, you can definitely see the reflections on it, but it's really nicely done, uh, the finish on this one as well here for the Cubile. And here we got, uh, speaking of which, it looks like a work in progress kind of showing how that was painted. So it looks like it was maybe painted even with like a base white pre-shading and then like a pearl tone added on top of that and then maybe some more uh, white or like a mixture of just like a plain white and pearl kind of used for that, kind of interesting. So I had to do, once again, some translating on that to figure out for sure about how that was painted. Up next, we got another Jim 2 here, the Ayug color scheme version modeled by Kasuhisa Tamura. This one is the 100 scale master grade version. Really great looking kit here. Very nice, uh, you know, doesn't have a ton of detail, but really nice paint finish here on this. Really nice colors too. I've always liked this particular color scheme here for the Jim 2. A little bit more kind of unique, sort of like a real type color scheme, I feel like, even though the real type Jim well, I don't know about a real type Jim 2, if there even is a, an official real type color scheme for the Jim 2, but for the Jim 1, the real type color scheme is like basically the same as the regular color scheme, so it's not like that much different, but you can see some uh, images over here of the unpainted model right there, just with some slight modification on it, very nice. Okay, then we've got a 1144 scale high grade uh, Psycho Gundam here modeled by Hiroyuki Noda. This one, speaking of panel line details on it, oh my god, <laughs> did he go nuts with the panel lining and the detailing on this. And I mean, like for the Psycho Gundam, I can kind of understand with it being such a large Gundam, like in the series, uh, the HDUC kit is not one that I've ever built. It's another one of those that, you know, it's kind of like a really popular kit uh, and, you know, but it's just not one that I've built. So I feel like I should at some point, but man, oh man, does this thing have a lot of panel lining and detailing going on on this. It's pretty crazy. I don't know, and I don't even know if this is all uh, symmetrical, I wonder. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it's even symmetrical. So I mean, yeah, for all the detailing that he's doing on this, if he wanted to try to make all that symmetrical, I think would have been pretty insane, but it looks like he just completely abandoned the any idea of that and just like, did panel lining all over the place and then also added these little bits of like added uh, little squares of plot plate, which you can see in like the work in progress photos over here. You can see like all those little white dots. It's all little bits of uh, plot plate that he added onto there. But man, whoo, what a design. Uh, very interesting, okay. So there's the Psycho Gundam. Up next here we got the Mark II G Defensor Super Gundam modeled by Ryuji Hirose, once again of the or Origin Club. This one's the 144 scale HG kit. So this is the HD Revive kit that uh, I think it was uh, the version that comes with the G Defensor, I think was like a P Bandai set, if I remember correctly. Obviously you can just get the G Defensor from the uh, regular like HGC Super Gundam uh, set, but this one, yeah, looks really nice. Just like with the a flying armor we saw earlier. I do really like the, the design of the G-Defensor. I think it's a cool kind of uh, added uh, sort of aircraft flight uh, equipment kind of to add to the Mark II. Here we got some more 3D printing. It's kind of interesting to see uh, 3D printed new feet here for the Gundam. A little bit different kind of design there, a little bit wider it looks like and kind of a little bit different uh, detail on that. It's quite interesting. We got the Methus here. This is the HGUC Methus modeled by Matsuo. Matsu, Matsuo G. Uh, there of the first age group once again. Uh, another one of those very unique designs. Certainly another one that I've not built. But 
I feel like this is a design that I feel like once I eventually build the kit, if and when I've ever build one for myself, I'm going to appreciate the design a lot more. So I feel like it's probably one of those that at first glance is just so weird and uh, it's just kind of, I don't know, hard to love. That was very much the case for me with the with the Rezzle uh, from Gunnam Unicorn. I wasn't a big fan of the design until I built it, and now I've built a few different versions of the Rezzle, and I, I like the design a lot now. Um, speaking of that, here's another good example of that. Here's the HGUC DJ. Uh, this was a great kit. This one's modeled by Kojima Dai Taicho. Uh, a really, really great kit. I'm still not that keen on the design, but it was a fantastic kit. Um, the RE100 kit is also really nice, but the HGUC, I think, uh, just is better in just that it's so much more fun to play with. I think if you want a little bit more detailed and a little bit larger uh, 100 scale version of the DJ, then the RE100 is great. But uh, like objectively, just pound for pound, I think the HGUC kit is, is a lot of fun. So got some cool work in progress images over here with some of the added detail on this. And it does look really nice. There it is with the Psycho Gundam. All right, we still got a few more. We got the Masala here, another one that I've not built that I've always kind of wanted to build. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. I need to build more Zeta era mobile suits, I guess, apparently. So this one's modeled by a Blondie 51. So Blondie is someone who we typically see uh, hit the Blondie's name come up when we're looking at different uh, Mecha Musume kits. But uh, he does do Gunpla as well. And I think he was just recently talking about um, on Twitter, if I remember correctly, he was mentioning something about how like, yes, I also do Gumpla kind of thing. So yeah, really nice build here of the Masala. So really nice paint finish with some nice, like kind of subtle pre-shading going on on there. Some added detail, but like not too much. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of Blondie's work. So you guys should know that by now. Uh, Blondie we had as a guest judge for our Mecha Musume contest. So awesome person, I'm a big fan. So always a fan of his work. It's very nicely done here. We've got the Palace Athene, which, get ready, I'm gonna say it again, is another mobile suit that I've always been kind of a fan of, but not ever built the kit. <laughs> so, another one I'm gonna add to my list here. This one's very, very interesting, what he's done with this. Uh, so this one's modeled by Hiroyuki Noda again. It's the HG kit here, of course, because we don't have a 100 scale uh, plastic model kit version. I believe there's a resin kit, but anyway. Uh, this is another one that I feel like would be a really, really great candidate for the RE100 line. If and when Ben Diver comes back to the RE100 line, I feel like the Palace Athene would be a great one for that. Anyway, uh, the detailing that he's done on this around, you can see on some of these edges, this kind of like uh, uh, gold, it's, it's, it's scribed in there. And I wanna see if it shows how that's done. Cause I mean, that's pretty impressive. That's scribed in, it's not just decals. So if you guys remember like those um, Zaku's and Dom, those P Bandai kits that came out uh, for like the Xeon custom versions that had the kind of ornamental uh, gold decals that kind of go around on it. It's like that, but this is like much more fine and it's actually scribed in and then filled in with gold paint rather than being decals on there. It's very, very interesting. It looks great. I mean, it's really, really cool how that's done. I mean, the fact that it's kind of like squiggles basically I guess makes it a little bit easier than trying to like scribe like an actual like kind of more ornamental design I guess if that makes sense where you're trying to be very precise about the design or even like straight lines or anything like that where you basically just kind of have to you know follow a line but you just kind of you can make it a little bit kind of wiggly woggly <laughs> so a little bit easier in that sense but still I mean just wow very really really cool uh, how that's done. Very like uh, five star stories inspired. I feel like th there's a lot of stuff going on with just like with the design of the Palace Athene in general. It already kind of like is very much looks like something out of five star stories. And I think the modeling, uh, the custom modeling done on this just kind of very much leans into that uh, five star stories design inspiration there with that, which looks good. Very cool. All right, the Bolinox Saman, one of the weirdest and, in my opinion, ugliest mobile suits that we're going to see in here probably. This one's modeled by Keita Yagyu. This one is a 100 scale scratch build because we don't even have an HGUC of this kit, which, again, uh, for how ugly I find the design, I don't find that to be too much of a loss that we don't have a HGUC kit, but I'm sure it's probably got some fans out there that uh, would like to see a model kit of it at some point. And I have a feeling we probably will get an HGUC kit uh, eventually. 
It's because Bandai is slowly but surely making their way through the Zeta obscure kind of weird mobile suits. And this one I'm, I'm sure is one that we will see. What I'm wondering if we're gonna see in here at all, and it doesn't look like it, is if we're going to see the the game alk, I guess, is not going to make an appearance in here. We don't have any uh, model kit of the game alk. Uh, I, I always, when I see the Bolinox Simone, always kind of reminds me of that because I feel like uh, they have a sort of similar design. Uh, but I really like the design of the game alk. I hope that we do get a model kit of that at some point. I believe there's a cost signature figure or something like that of it, um, if I remember correctly. But yeah, hopefully we will get a model kit. That's another one that I think would be great for either HGC or RE100. Here we got the Gavifle, the HGUC, modeled by Shinichiro Sawatake. Really cool kit here. Shout out to friend of the channel and just friend of mine, Joshua Dara, for his uh, Gavifle build, which was really, really nice. I think that was, if I remember correctly, the last kind of fully finished Gumpla build that Josh has done, unfortunately. Hopefully he'll do some more in the future, but he did a fantastic job. This one also looks really, really nice. Another really great design. This one I have actually built long ago. I think I built it, uh, if I remember correctly, like before I was even doing videos on YouTube, but I think maybe I built it again, and I do have a video of it on YouTube. I don't even remember now, but it's been a long time since I've built it, but it is a really great kit, very cool, uh, a lot of fun. It's an older HGUC kit, but I think it holds up pretty well. It is really, it's a lot of fun. So we have the Hamrabi. This one's modeled by Keisuke Watanabe. This one is the HGUC kit here, of course. A little bit newer one, this is kind of one of the more recent uh, HGUC Zeta Gundam uh, era releases here. The It's probably been out for quite a while now, I guess at this point, but newer than some of the other models that we've seen in here anyway. Really cool design here on this. Very, uh, very unique, very unique design here. Amongst uh, a lot of mobile suits that we're seeing in here, there's a lot of unique suits. The Hamrabi is one of the more unique ones. And this one as well here, the Gaza C. This one's modeled by uh, Akinori Yoshimura. This is the HGUC kit here uh, for this one as well, of course. Another pretty weird and obscure, I guess it's not obscure, I mean, it's pretty prominently featured in the series, but uh, just kind of weird design. But the HGUC, HGUC kit that has been around for quite a while, there's actually two different versions of it. So even though it's one of the weirder ones, it is one that Bandai did make as an HGUC kit, uh, you know, relatively early on. So pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Gaza design, but I know there are certainly people who are. Uh, the Bond Dock, another one of the more recent releases here. I loved this kit. So I built and did like a custom painted one, and then I actually snap built up another one just a few months ago, last year. I guess it's probably been a little while now, but I built up another Bond Dock HGUC kit just because I have an idea for a cust another custom build that I want to do with that. Uh, hopefully, maybe I'll actually get to doing that custom build someday. But anyway, this one's modeled by Matsuoji, once again. Here, one thing that is immediately apparent to me as far as customization goes on this that stands out that I really like is the lengthened and very pointy bunny ears on it. So it's ears that it's got up there. It looks like he probably added some length and sharpened them to a very sharp point there on the top of the head. Looks really cool. There, here we can see a bunch of work in progress photos showing, yeah, the antenna on the head. It looks like uh, some modifications in and around like the claw section. Oh yeah, to sharpen those up as well. Yeah, added some length and made those extra pointy. So yeah, really cool to see the work in progress on that. All right, we're getting close to the end here. We've got the Jared Assault. This is HGUC uh, bond dock use. This is a Jared, I guess, assault version. I know, anyway, this one modeled by Katsunari Kakuta. It's basically just a diorama build here with the Bondok attacking the Jim 2s and we've got the Zeta Gundam kind of coming to the rescue here. So if I remember correctly, this is probably replaying a scene from the anime. It's been a long time since I've watched Zeta Gundam, but really cool build here. The damage on like the Jim 2s uh, from the Bondok looks really cool. Like how that's done here for this diorama looks really nice. And you can see there's a little bit of like work in progress about how that damage was done on that. And uh, just the overall composition of this scene looks really, really nice there with it being set on this kind of broken uh, big panel there. All right, and then we have the alternate color version here of the Bondok. I forget what this uh, version is called, and unfortunately it doesn't say here. This one's also once again modeled by Ga from First Age. This is once again the same kit, obviously the HGUC, but uh, in the alternate color scheme. So. 
I've, I'm, you know, I'm usually a fan of the kind of all gray color scheme. This version for the for the Bondock, just because of the design of the Bondock, I feel like uh, this color scheme almost makes it a bit too boring, just because it's such a weird and outlandish design that it kind of needs a a weird color scheme. I guess I, uh, the custom painted Bondock that I did, I painted it in a gray color scheme, but I, I did it in a little bit kind of different. I had it kind of like as like a, a splinter camo. Uh, color scheme on it and then added some like uh, brighter color decals on it to kind of make it pop so I don't know I guess I shouldn't talk about a gray color scheme on a Bondog being bo too boring because that's what I did but I did it a little bit differently than that anyway that's a very uh, very like light gray very very subdued gray on there and you do still have a little bit of color like with the light green going on there but yeah I don't know what do you guys think you like the gray color scheme of the Bondog or you like the original the original I mean it's also very gaudy so i mean they're both pretty weird color schemes because it's just a weird mobile suit but speaking of which here's another one we've got the barland so the barland is modeled here by yoshitaku chotoku so and of course the hguc kit even after we had the barland custom and a number of different uh barland variations to come out as premium bandai exclusives we eventually did finally get the original barland out as well all great kits i can highly recommend them the original Barland is probably my least favorite among them, but they're all great kits, so whichever version you like or whichever one you can get your hands on, I would say definitely check it out. It's a really cool kit, a lot of fun, just super unique. It's a lot of fun to pose and do all that. The Barzam here is going to be one of our last suits. Another really great kit, another design that is, you know, I'm not super into the design, but it's such a good kit. The HGUC Barzam, really nice. This one is also by Kaha. And we got some nice photos here of the very nicely painted Barzam. Yeah, very cool. I don't think that we're going to see any advanced Zeta stuff here, but the AOZ Barzam was also a great kit. We got a Hyzak Custom being one of our last ones here by Orange Ebis. This one is the HGUC Hyzak uh, Custom. And not really too sure what's custom about it. I guess it's the um, the rifle for one. I can tell it's a custom rifle and the color scheme is a little bit different. But I do kind of like the changes to the color scheme on this one. It's uh, once again, it's kind of a, a little bit more towards the like original Zaku color scheme. Here you can see it side by side. And so it doesn't have uh, the red, as much red accents as the original, which is nice. It's a less colorful. So it still has the yellow, it still has the red accents on there, but they're very subdued. Uh, so I definitely like that. It's not as brightly colored as the original. So that's pretty nice. All right, and then the 1300 scale uh, Psycho Gundam Mark II model kit here, modeled by Hiroyuki Noda. So this one, I believe this is a, a Bandai model kit release. They do have a model kit of the Psycho Gundam, if I remember correctly. This is the old, uh, it's an old 80s kit. And yes, that's why it's in 1300 scale. So it's kind of weird, very weird scale that we don't really see very often outside of like some of the old 80s kits for the mobile armors. So this is another one that I know uh, I know there's probably a lot of people who would love to have a proper HGUC kit of this, like with the, psych with the original Gundam. I was going to say Psycho Gundam Mark 1, but it's not the Mark 1, just the original Psycho Gundam. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would love to have a Psycho Gundam Mark 2 as well. Pretty cool. Uh, which do you guys prefer? I'm not sure. I actually kind of uh, like the Psycho Gundam, the original one, a little bit more, I feel like. But there is definitely some really cool aspects to the Mark 2 as well. All right, and then we've got the Assault Cruiser Argama. This one modeled by Toro Bohige. This one is in 1700 scale. So yeah, these mobile suits are going to be very, very tiny there on the top of the ship and on the flight deck. But a really nice model here of this. This is the EX model. So this is another one of those uh, Bandai ship models that they do make. Um, every once in a while, you do see some really nice custom builds of these. And this one's a really nice example of that. So we got a lot of different uh, work in progress images here showing how some of the lighting was added into that for all the LED lights and everything. And that's it. So that's going to wrap it up as there's a fruit fly flying around in here, which I can't seem to get rid of. 
But anyway, guys, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in there. So I know it was a little bit longer video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at a whole bunch of really, really nice builds there of some Zeta Air mobile suits. A lot of great stuff in there. I can highly recommend this issue of Mechanics Archive here for you guys from Hobby Japan. Definitely check it out. If you want to check out any of the kits themselves or some more Gunpla model kits and tools, supplies, and all that good stuff, check the link in the video description down below to US at Gundam Store. And if you also want to make sure to like the video, Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys all so much for your support. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments if you had a particular favorite, anything that you really enjoyed out of this one. Let me know. And as always, guys, hope you have a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye.